I'm Rebecca Zabinski, Director of Artistic Planning for the Houston Symphony. Looking at the history of the Houston Symphony and our past music directors, one of the most important, absolutely, is Christoph Eschenbach. He is responsible for making the Houston Symphony the world-class orchestra that it is today. He set us on a trajectory to success, and he has such a special chemistry with this orchestra in particular that is absolutely unique to Christoph and to our musicians. There are many musicians in the orchestra who Christoph hired and who played under him when he was here as music director. They have so many fond memories together. I know that Christoph also has so many fond memories making music with this orchestra in many different ways. You know, he toured and made music with the orchestra as a whole and also with you know smaller groups of chamber musicians. And it's such a treat for us to have him back regularly and to still enjoy a wonderful relationship with such an important musician. The music of Bruckner is such a specific thing. It is so unique and it has such a special musical language People who love Bruckner really, really love Bruckner. And it's certainly a rabbit hole that you can really go down musically. There's so much to know and to learn. And it's also on such a large scale. It requires such a specific musical mind. And there is no one who is better at interpreting the music of Bruckner than Christoph Eschenbach. He 100% gets to the very core of Bruckner's music every time. There's actually a term called the Bruckner problem because Bruckner's music, all of his symphonies are, are so vast in scale. Um, and Bruckner himself liked to revise his music often. Other people did a lot of revisions of his music as well. And as a result, there are many different versions of every Bruckner symphony. So if you really want to know the music of Bruckner, not only do you have to know each symphony itself and each piece of music itself, but also all of the revisions. It's sort of like a niche specialty. And um, the term Bruckner problem is meant to describe, you know, the issue of, you know, what version do you do? Like, what do you pluck from this? What do you pluck from that? How do you know what Bruckner really intended? And when you hear Christoph interpret, interpret one of Bruckner's symphonies, you can feel very assured that you are hearing an interpretation that Bruckner would have absolutely put his stamp of approval on. I read a quote that said that the beginning of Bruckner Bruckner's Eighth Symphony is like the beginning of the world. And that's kind of how you feel when you're listening to a Bruckner symphony. You're in this like musical world that he created and it's very windy and twisty sometimes and it meanders to and fro with this huge orchestral force. And there's a lot that's really exciting about it, but it does require somebody who can wrangle all of those forces and make all of this big music make some sort of sense.